All right, are you someone that is either applying right now or is applying upcoming years? Whether that's MD schools, the old schools, or even both MD schools like I did the last cycle. And are you interested in seeing how my application cycle went? Well, you should stick around and find out as I'm going to go over my entire application cycle from primaries, secondaries, interviews, and ultimately the results of my application cycle. All right, before we start the video, I want to provide some context so that you guys can more understand how my application cycle went. So, my name is Sean and I was a recent graduate at Rutgers University that majored in exercise science and I am originally actually from New York City. I was born in New York City but raised in New Jersey. I took two gap years before matriculating to medical school. Now, in terms of stats, I had a 3.7 regular GPA and a 2.75 science GPA. Now, this was slightly adjusted according to AMC, so it was slightly lower, but that was what my GPA was while I was in college. And then, in terms of my MCAT score, I scored in the lower 500 range, so that was what my stats were. And of course, it wasn't the best in terms of my MCAT. And it was disappointing because of how my practice test went when I scored much higher and realizing the test day that even though I felt like I performed well, I didn't do so well on the real exam. And of course I had a few regrets, you know, not getting a tutor, for example, to prove my car section, but I felt like I wanted to still apply as I felt like I gave it at least enough of a try and I felt like I could still have a good chance at least get into a DO school. So I was like, why not apply to both MDDO schools? All right, with each section of this video, I'm gonna tell you guys basically what happened throughout the application cycle, but then also tell me about my thoughts in each of the sections of this video. So we're gonna start off with primaries, and I applied to a total of 36 schools, both from the MD and DO side. So I applied to 36 schools, and I'm gonna just read out the list of schools that I applied to, so that I don't have to keep like reading back and forth, essentially. The 36 schools that I applied to, starting with the MD schools, which I applied to 21 MD schools, were New Jersey Medical School, Hackensack Meridian School of Medicine, St. Hart University, Cooper Medical School of Royal University, Albert Einstein College of Medicine, New York Medical College, Albany Medical College, SUNY Downstate Health Sciences, University College of Medicine, Sydney Kimmel Medical College, Lewis Cass Schools of Medicine at Temple University, Howard University School of Medicine, Virginia Tech Carleton School of Medicine, Rice State University Boonshaw School of Medicine, University of Cincinnati College of Medicine, Oakland University William Bluemont School of Medicine, University of Toledo College of Medicine and Life Sciences, Meharry Medical College, Morehouse School of Medicine, Chicago Medical School at Rosen Franklin University of Medicine and Science, Medical College of Wisconsin, and Charles R. Drew University of Medicine and Science College of Medicine. So that's for the MD side, I applied to 21 MD schools. And now for the DO schools, I applied to 15 of them, which were Warren University School of Osteopathic Medicine, New York Institute of Technology College of Osteopathic Medicine, Torah College of Osteopathic Medicine in New York, Philadelphia College of Osteopathic Medicine for both the Philadelphia campus and the Georgia campus, Edward Via College of Osteopathic Medicine for the Auburn campus, Nova Southeastern University College of Osteopathic Medicine, Lake Erie College of Osteopathic Medicine at the Bradenton campus, Marion University College of Osteopathic Medicine, Chicago College of Osteopathic Medicine at Midwest University, University of the Incarnate Ward School of Osteopathic Medicine, A.T. Still University School of Osteopathic Medicine in Arizona, Torrey University of Nevada College of Osteopathic Medicine, Western University of Health Sciences College of Osteopathic Medicine of the Pacific, and finally Torrey University College of Osteopathic Medicine in California. All right, and in terms of my thoughts, I submitted my MD application on June 2nd, while I submitted my DO application on June 9th. Now, the only regret I have this a little bit is that I wish I submitted my DO application a bit earlier, maybe like in the end of May or, you know, the end of June, but I wanted to prioritize my MD application and it worked out, so we're not too mad about it. Another thing is that I had to readjust my school list due to my retake MCAT being lower than expected, 
So I had to add a few schools that initially didn't have my list before and I had to remove schools that I wanted to really apply to my list. Also, I wish I didn't add so much DO schools to my list just due to the cause of applying to DO schools as well as MD schools. And also I didn't qualify for the ACOMAS fee waiver, which made costs even more expensive and having to pay for both the primary and secondaries of each of the 15 schools I applied to. Now I did get lucky in that some of them did accept fee waivers for my AMC fee waiver that I got, but still it was still a very hefty cost to encounter. Another thing I thought about was that ties can have effect but only to a certain extent. Like I mentioned in, in my last or two videos, I feel like schools anywhere with a less than 20% of out of school matriculants, it's gonna be pretty hard to get accepted at school unless you're a very ex applicant. So, for example, SUNY Downstate has 50%, and even though I applied there because I, you know, had ties in New York City, because I wasn't the most compelling applicant due to my stats. So, definitely, if I had to reapply again with the same stats, I definitely wouldn't apply to that school because it only has a 15% of matriculation rate for out of state students. Another thing that I realized is that I should have not applied to, to a certain type of MD schools, which I'm gonna read below. So the schools that I should have applied to were Cornell, Simi Kimmel, Einstein somewhat, I'll get back to the school later, and Cincinnati. And most of the reason why is due because those stats or those school stats were higher than my stats. And what I would have done differently is I would have applied to more low-use schools or schools that would maybe more accept my stats. So for example, probably some schools I would apply to were Drexel, Laura, UIC, UCLA, Wayne State, RWJMS, which I should apply to anyway as an in-state student of New Jersey, Georgetown, Wake Forest, George Washington, East Virginia Medical School, and TCU, which is a Texas Christian University. And I would have obviously removed Cornell, Sidney Kimmel, Rice State, Downstate, Virginia Tech, Albany, Cincinnati, VCOM, LECOM, TUNCOM, Marion, and Western. And I would have removed most of these schools either because they have a very in state bias or those stats of those schools are way too high. And I would have definitely also done this after calling schools for screening purposes, you know, due to a low GPA or MCAT. Now, second news was definitely probably the hardest part of the application process because of how long it took. For example, I applied to 36 schools and you usually get around like 5 to 10 essays for each school. And that got added up pretty quickly if you didn't like pre-write before or if you didn't prepare beforehand. So right off the bat, I did receive two pre-secondary rejections one from Cooper and one from Virginia Tech and that was because of due to low MCAT and or low section based scores. Now I should have not even be or I should have not even applied to Virginia Tech because it did list that MCAT requirement below in their website but I just couldn't find it at the time. And for Cooper Rowan it was a bit harder to detect that as it didn't mention the website. So this is when I think calling for screening purposes could definitely work if the school actually reveals to you what screening they have. Now, I did receive secondaries anywhere from June to October, and October is pretty late to receive secondary from, which the reason why I did receive that is because I added that school pretty late, which you should not do, you just shouldn't do. I think schools or the applications you submit should be complete latest by September, early September, by ideally by August and July. And when I mean complete, I mean when the secondaries are submitted and when the school sends the email saying that your application is complete and ready for a review for a potential interview. And some thoughts I have about the secondaries that if you email schools about your financial situation, especially if you have a for mom application software, you could get away for a secondary from the other application software. Again, it was a huge mistake out of schools later on, as in that time of September, schools can usually send interviews. So I think, again, you should be out of schools maybe mostly by July, maybe August, but really by July. And acts of help for secondaries, especially if you need help or answer a question, can definitely help because schools definitely do not want you to be fluffery or be creative. I mean, being creative definitely helps, but they don't want to, they want to get straight to the point. 
you want to just answer the question as the prompt is presented. And definitely it's very important to take breaks to prevent any burnout as, again, second is a lot, like you be writing a lot of essays. And I definitely had a regret not taking as much breaks as I wish I did because there was literally some secondaries that I felt like I just could understand. And I felt like I have a more fresher mind. I would have been able to answer those secondaries much more easier because I would have more clear mind to focus on. Now we'll move on to the interview section and I was very fortunate to receive interviews from 11 MD and DO schools. And those MD schools I received an interview invite from were Morehouse, Einstein, Toledo, and Howard. And for the DO schools, I received an interview invite from VCOM, URW SOM, TORACOM, Rowan SOM, ATSU SOMA, NSUCOM, and TUNCOM. And receiving that first invite was amazing as I felt like all the hard work was starting to pay off. And especially receiving the first or receiving an interview invite from Einstein was very surreal as I was not expecting at all. The stats of that school is way higher than my stats. And what made it even better was that the school that I got an interview from, the hospital is right next to it that I was born in. So that made things even more surreal. And of course, I'll celebrate with family. So that was just a very good moment. And in terms of the actual interviews throughout the cycle, it did go to a pretty slow start. As you, you know, I was getting used to the interview style and how the interview days run. But with practice, I started to get better. And one lesson I definitely got is that by being able to have a conversation with the interviewer, be able to connect your experiences to the mission statement will definitely help you getting that acceptance. All right, now for the results. I'm gonna go from rejections to wait lists and then to acceptances. So pre-interview, I received rejections from several schools actually, which I'm gonna read on my computer. So the pre-interview rejections I received were NGMS, Hackersack, Cooper, NYMC, Cornell, Albany, Downstate, Simi Kimmel, Temple, Virginia Tech, OUWB, Meharry, Wilson Franklin, MCW, and Charles Drew. For the DO schools, I received a pre-interview rejection from NYTCOM, PCUM for both the Philly and Georgia campuses, LECOM, Marion, CCUM, Western, and Toro University, California. And then the interviews that I did not, or the interviews that I declined were ATSU SOMA, NSUCOM, and TUNCUM. Now the reason why I declined those three interviews were because at that time I already gained sepsis from either DO school or MD school. So it didn't really make sense to go to those interviews when I already knew that I was getting sent to those schools. And the rejection that I received post interview was from Einstein and from v VCOM. Now the Einstein one I felt really sad about because this again was a school I was really wanting to get into at the beginning of the cycle. And I felt like I did okay in the interview. So I thought I maybe had a decent chance of at least getting it, at least on the wait list, but it never happened. And looking back to it, I definitely regretted it a little bit as I didn't quite connect my answers to the mission statement. And I did to get to talk my experience as much as I felt like I should have. Now onto the wait list, we received wait lists from Morehouse, Toledo, and Howard. And for the DO school, we received wait lists from Rowan. After getting two substances from DO schools, I did eventually receive the symptoms from Toledo and MD school. And I got the subject of course off the wait list. And for DO schools, I received subjects from Rowan and Toro and UIW SOM. And those last two schools were the two DO schools I got subjects to earlier in the cycle. Now I did receive some post wait list rejections and that was from Morehouse and Howard. The Howard one was forced because of the CT deadline, which is the commit to roll deadline. And Morehouse, I did receive rejection around I think it was mid-June and that was because the orientation was about to start and they filled the class already. Now, in terms of final thoughts, this cycle has definitely brought a lot of ups and downs. Obviously at the start of the cycle, I was doing pretty decent with interview advice and then towards the end, I started to see a lot more rejections or wait lists. So definitely an up and down roller coaster. The school that I attend starting the fall 2024 semester is the University of Toledo College of Medicine and Life Sciences. And this was not the school that I expected to get into or not expected to matriculate into as this was a school I added pretty much last minute after I got my MCAT retake score back. And also, I'm just glad everything worked out. Of course, I thank God because without him, nothing would be possible for me. Also, I thank 
my family for always their energy support, as well as my many friends that helped me out in this epidemic cycle that are current medical students. All right, thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed, make sure to hit that like button as well as subscribe for more content like this and share this video with someone who maybe might be in the cycle. And comment down below if you're in the cycle so I can see what type of stuff you want to see or I can even help out. And also comment down below if you're still pre-med. And I want to see what you guys are up to. And with that being said, thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you guys next time. Take care.